So I was, I've been sharing this story with people over the weekend, and I think I briefly mentioned it on air last week that, you know, I had to move all the way to Idaho uh, so I could interview somebody that I've known for years on, uh, on the radio uh, who is actually running a small world running for political office this year. Uh, Christy Zitto is joining us this morning on the air, and she is a challenger. Uh, she's challenging Richard Wills in District 23A, Representative District 23A this year, uh, for a Republican primary. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say welcome to our program. Thank you, Bill. It's so nice to talk to you again. I remember the good times that we had on the phone when you were on the coast. Yeah, uh, you were an occasional caller of my show when I was uh, in Delaware. And I... <laughs> Didn't we meet at a women's conference in Wildwood in about 2009? No, we did never get to meet in person. We met through Helen McCaffrey through Women's Watch. Right. But as far as in person, that has not happened yet. Okay. But I expect it to happen soon. I live, yeah, because we live uh, now, what, we're about 40 miles down the road from each other. Yes, instead of half a continent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, we want to point out that you, you're a longtime resident of this part of the country. Uh, native of uh, Utah, you've lived in Idaho for a number of years. Uh, you've got a, a farming background as well. Um, I was surprised when you told me last week that you were going to challenge Mr. Wills. And um, I've seen what his victory totals have been in the last couple of general elections. And he's, at least when it comes to running against Democrats, he he, he does well. He scores about seven out of 10 votes in general elections. What's the motivation with the challenge at, at this point? Well, I think the biggest thing about it is is because I can. And I think it's such an honor and a privilege to live in a country where just a common everyday person like myself can make that kind of a challenge. Um, I think sometimes we forget that we are the government and we we think that our vote doesn't count and we think that our opinions don't count. But we have to stop and remember, for example, that John Kennedy won the election by one precinct vote, what amounted to one pre one vote in every precinct in the United States. And I am looking forward to representing the voice of the people of my district. I want to get to know them. I want to know their concerns. I want to know what's important to them. I want to represent their views. And I think that the people in the state of Idaho are hardworking people, and they work hard to raise families and to make their communities better. And I just think it's a great opportunity to be able to make that run to represent them. And I feel blessed to be in a situation in a country where I do have that opportunity. Now, we were talking off air, and you you mentioned uh, that that, uh, when it comes to Pete Nelson, who's the other representative in 23, Uh, You think he's doing a phenomenal job, and I was telling you, I think, as well, that I know a lot of people who are huge fans of his. Uh, What is it that that differs with Mr. Wills that uh, he's he's obviously, at some point, he's disappointed you that you feel you have to challenge him? Well, I don't know that I can necessarily say he's disappointed me. I think his voting record somewhat speaks for itself. I am my Bahamut precinct committee person, and I am state county committee woman. And the year before I won that position, as part of the Republican platform, um, in the resolutions committee, the Republican Party, the representatives, the precinct committee people had adopted as part of their platform and resolution that they did not want Common Core. And that was passed. That was accepted, you know, in our state. And there have just been a few things like that The Idaho Freedom Foundation gives Rich a 37% um, conservative rating. And I I don't want to dwell a lot on that. What I want to do is I, I want to be a candidate that is willing to listen to my people. I want to be the candidate that people feel that they can come to and talk to about their concerns that they can trust that I will vote according to their concerns and their wishes and their desires. I want to be the candidate of the people. Didn't, and I want them to feel that I am approachable and they can talk to me and that I will represent their will. You referenced education in, in, in Common Core. Uh, if I memory strikes me, uh, you, you homeschooled your children. I homeschooled my youngest child. My others attended public school, but my youngest one I homeschooled. And, and, uh, we do K twelve. Okay, uh, and so so obviously, uh, you have some success there, 
and uh, see how well that works versus something like a, a distant control by Washington with with an with a education system? Well, I was on our school board in Glens Ferry, I think, for three years. And part of the frustrating part for me was as funding would come in, our superintendent would have to spend so many hours trying to figure out, number one, how to get the federal funding, how to make sure we were in compliance, how to make sure that that the funds were spent, how they needed to be so that we could continue to get them so that they fit federal guidelines. And in my mind, and I believe in the minds of a lot of the people in this state, education should be closer to home. What works for us in the state of Idaho doesn't necessarily work well for those in the state of California or the state of Texas or the state of Delaware. Education is something that should be handled closer to home. And one of my goals would be to work with the State Department of Education in making it so that our local school districts do have more control of their funding and do have more control over where those monies go when they come into the districts so that the monies reach the teachers, our hardworking teachers who invest so much in the education of our children and have such a vested stake in that. Our children are our future, Bill. And there's nothing more that can be said more important than that. They are the ones who will be making the decisions for our country. They are the ones who will be working and building our country and making it great and strong. And without a solid, firm, basic education, they don't stand much of a chance in that. Our guest is uh, Christy Zitto, and she is uh, joining us this morning. She is a primary challenger to Richard Wills for District 23A, State Legislative District, a representative district. And uh, primary is in May, right, Uh, state primary? Yes. So you've got a couple of months to really uh, get the campaign kicked into overdrive. For people who'd like to know more, you've got a Facebook page. Uh, Maybe tell them how they could take a look at that. It's. I'm not a Facebook guru. I think you can just go on there and Google my name, or not Google my name, but search my name on Facebook, and it will bring it up. And that's Christy and with a I, C-H, right? Uh, not the K, yes. but a C-H. And the last name is... C-H-R-I-S-T-Y. And the last name is Z-I-T-O. Yes. Okay. And uh, do you have a, a web presence yet? No, I do not. I have an email address. It's C-H-R-I-S-T-Y for L-D-23 at gmail.com. Does Mr. Wills know? I mean, at this point, I guess it's, you know, since the, the Facebook page went up, I'm sure someone has told him. Do you have much of a reaction from him? I haven't talked to Rich about it yet. I saw him in church yesterday, but I didn't get to talk to him. He may have avoided you, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I don't think that's the case. I, I, can, he's, I cannot see Rich avoiding me. <laughs> I was going to say, though, it... it, it, it uh, it, it's not always easy to challenge someone you know, especially in the same party, for a seat that they've held for a very long time. Uh, and I would imagine there's a little discomfort with that. Well, I feel okay about it because it's, it's the process, and it's part of what makes our country great, the fact that we can do this. Um, so many of our founding fathers were just common, everyday people. And to me, that is part of the exciting part of the process is, you know, here I am. I've just been, I've been a mother. I was, grew up ranching and farming. In fact, I do have roots in Idaho that go way back. My grandmother owned a ranch, my great-grandmother, excuse me, owned a ranch in Stone, Idaho that I spent a lot of time on growing up. And so that's what's so, part of what's so exciting to me is, um, anybody can participate in the process, and we can we can run for office, we can vote, we can voice our opinion to our precinct committee people and to our legislators and our representatives, and it's just exciting. I, I feel really good about it. We've got about two minutes uh, before my break, but uh, before we do that, when you talk a little bit about Idaho, uh, to you, what does really make this place unique? Well, I think Idaho is unique because the people, they are, they are still, I think, quite conservative. They are hardworking people. They, they are not afraid to stand up for what they believe in. Um, I think that 
in general, it's just hard to, you can't say enough good about the people in the state of Idaho. They, they believe that our country's great. They, they are the kind of citizens that are the backbone of a country that is great. And I'm excited to represent them. I'm excited to be their voice and to hear what they have to say and to travel around and meet as many as I can and get to know them. Nobody wants to, uh, you know, uh, come across as being uh, overly confident, I guess, in any election, but it would appear that whoever wins a Republican primary in this district uh, is going to win the general election. I mean, I just, I see those numbers, and it so overwhelmingly uh, favors uh, Republicans in the general uh, that, that, that May is really the big period. And then I, you can't say you'd coast, but then you'd still have an opportunity just to spread the message uh, I'm not even aware at this point that there's a Democrat who's announced for the uh, for the seat. I'm not aware of that either. I I haven't looked that far into it. And, you know, I'm not saying that I'm going to blow Rich away or anything like that. He is a formidable opponent, and he's served a long time. But I am just excited to be part of the process and to be able to to make the process work. I mean, this is how it was set up. And I think it's good for any of us to be challenged in a position that we hold. I think it keeps us sharp. I think the competition makes us look at what we've done and and how we voiced our opinion and helps to keep us in line. And I was going to say, it's a big district. You've got a lot of traveling to do between now and May. Yes, I do. And (laughs) it's already started, and I'm so excited. Well, we we look forward to chatting with you again. I'm sure that uh, when you're campaigning in the Twin Falls area, uh, we'll have a chance to catch up. Oh, you and I definitely have to do lunch. Like I've told you, I'm really excited to really meet the person that's behind the microphone. We've had a good relationship for quite a while, and, and I'm really excited to meet you and have lunch with you. And anytime I can you know, visit with you on your show about whatever issues or whatever you would like, you give me a call. There's got to be a good restaurant near the blacksmith shop in Glens Ferry. I would think. Let's see. I, I think we could probably find something if you want to come <laughs> this way. Glensbury's a good place. Good people. Well, Christy, I want to thank you much for your time this morning. Oh, thank you for having me on, Bill. I enjoy it. And thank you. Christy Zito joining us this morning. Uh, she is uh, uh, Zito, as she pronounces it. Uh, we were talking earlier that uh, her son was a good baseball player, and there were comparisons to Barry Zito, uh, but slightly different pronunciation. She is a candidate challenging in a primary for District 23A, Representative District 23A, here in Idaho, spending a few minutes sharing uh, some ideas with us about why she decided to uh, take that course and challenge incumbent uh, Richard Wills, who we also are looking forward to uh, chatting with on the program uh, sometime in the coming weeks. 20 minutes after 9 o'clock. friend of mine joining me in a few minutes, John Brady. He, John was here on air with us a few months ago. He was traveling through the area, and we had a conversation with him. Uh, he actually has met or did meet the late Justice Antonin Scalia. John's going to share his recollections with us coming up in just a few minutes.